Just a quickie, I've been shopping again. It's still uh, sale time in a lot of the garden centres for seeds as it's coming to the end of the growing season. We're getting into autumn, so I've been uh, making the most of all the cheap seeds. These particular ones were from a Wyvale garden centre just outside of York. So, what have I got? Um, Cause yet, F1 Eclipse. Now, these were, these all these seeds, by the way, were 50 pence, but these should have been... £3.69. There is no way I'd pay that for £3.69. Um, so, yeah, 50 pence. David, I never know how to say his name. Demoni or Domini. Show me Demoni. Time. Because I was lamenting the fact we've not really grown any time in our garden or allotment this year. And I, I normally like to dry it out and it gets used in loads of cooking at Christmas. So... I'll grow this for next year and then hopefully, you know, we'll have we'll have that herb that we've missed out on this year. Um, some snowball turnips. Big fat packet of peas. These are called Avola and they're from the uh, Q Urban Garden Collection. Renegade F1 Spinach. Let's move those. Super Marman tomatoes. We've not grown Marman for a couple of years and they normally do well for us and they're big, massive, fat tomatoes as well. And then, just because I always like to mix flowers in with my veg, um, some dwarf compact mixed nasturtium. Little random fact, nasturtium in Latin, it loosely translates as nose twister. And I'm wondering if it's that peppery taste that they have. It, it makes your nose twist. So that's what they call nasturtium, nose twisters. So I've got, I counted up all the prices on the back before. I've got just over £17 worth of seeds and it cost me £3.50. So get yourself out to garden centres, guys, while these sales are still on. Make the most of these cheap seeds. Right, guys, this is one of our several kale plants at the allotment and it is covered in white fly Let's see if i can here we go look right you seen that disgusting so my question to you is what have i done that's allowed this to happen i'm suspecting netting but then again how can the white fly not get through netting the tiny? So what have I done to allow this to happen? And second question, how can I prevent it without using chemicals? I'm not into uh, weapons of mass destruction. What kind of chemical free organic method is there? And I know that there's some of you that are really clever and you're gonna go, oh yeah, if you use garlic in water, that's a type of chemical, garlic's got chemicals in it. What I mean is non-synthetic chemicals. What what can I use? I don't want to go down the synthetic route and start getting like Roundup or whatever it's called out. Any any type of insect in or Roundup's a, a weed killer, isn't it? I don't want to get a, an insecticide out. So what can I use that's a natural way of getting rid of what I've already got in terms of the white fly and stopping them from coming back as well? Your help is greatly appreciated. Right, so we all know as gardeners that um, gardening is made up of successes and failures. Now, some of the successes we've had this year are the courgettes. Uh, there's, there's one plant there, and it's only just, it's beginning of October, and it's only just starting to get um, grey mould on the leaves. So that's coming out this weekend anyway. But they have been amazing this year, the courgette plants. They really have. I honestly think... If you're ever looking for like a Nobel Peace Prize, just suggest that you stop world hunger by giving everybody a courgette seed and they can plant their own. And no one will ever go hungry if you've got a courgette plant. Right, so they've been a success. Right then, failure. This bed here, you can see down the end, we've got a couple of different types of lettuce. But then where that stick is, all here, we planted um, fennel. The bulb variety, Florence fennel, not 
the herb variety. So, and out of all the ones we planted, I can't remember exactly how many it was, but it would have been quite a few. Um, this is the only one that survived. Bless it, how lonely does that look? So that's been a failure really. Um, carrots as well. I think we get one or two carrots that have actually grown out of the couple of hundred seeds that we planted. So what failures have you guys had in your growing exploits this year? It doesn't just have to be food crops like this Florence fennel. It could be flowers that you've tried starting from seed and for whatever reason just they haven't seemed to work. Nothing's come through for you. But yeah, so what failures have you guys had this year? Another big success we've had is this chard. We literally can't pick it quick enough. Have any of you been growing chard this year? And if so, what varieties? So even though it's like near the start of October, um, I've still got some calendula going on. There's a few different things that have been going on. So we've got some buds that haven't opened yet. Um, we've got flowers that have been and gone. We've got some flowers that are still going. We've got a couple of different colours. Some yellows and some oranges. And then, if you hunt for them, we've got some that have um, completely gone to seed and dried out, right there. So, I'm just going to have a look around. Oh, there's a little bug there. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, a little bug. There you go. I'll have a hunt around, and I'll collect these seeds. Uh, make sure that they're properly dried out, because it has been raining. And then I'll put them in an envelope, and I'll replant these next year. Because we've got these at the allotment near the um, the pond. Although to be honest, it's a bit of an optical illusion that pond. It looks like grass or moss because there's that much duckweed on it. Yeah, so we've got all kinds of flowers mixed in. Right, I'm going to collect some more calendula seeds. If you're new to the channel, why not click on the subscribe button and then the notification bell so you won't miss out on future uploads. Thanks for watching.